in the last lecture i have introduced to you a non programmable io port device the h212 and also i have introduced to you the versatile general purpose programmable peripheral interface the h255a both these devices have been designed and developed by intel for interfacing input output devices i have discussed in detail how these devices can be used these peripheral devices can be used to interface input output devices today let me continue uh, from the point what i uh, finished in the last lecture uh, let me start with the uh, operation of 8 to 5 pi and let us summarize the various fun functions it can do we can dis discuss it based on the control word because control word is used to program the uh, device to operate in different modes as input port output port and different modes so these are the bit values which have to be loaded into the control word of the 8255a and whenever this most significant bit is set to 1 uh, you can set the io mode and as you know the uh, different three different ports which are available port a port b and port 2 port c can be configured in mode 1 mode uh, mode 0 mode 1 and mode 2 as i have discussed mode 0 is simple input output operations and ports a b and c all the three ports can be used in this simple uh, mode simple io mode on the other hand uh, the mode 1 is used to implement asynchronous and interrupt driven mode and ports a and b can be configured in either of these two modes asynchronous or interrupt driven and whenever you are using in mode 1 port c lines we have seen are used for hand shaking and shaking or as interrupt lines that we have discussed now we are left with mode 2 mode 2 operation is a is strobed bidirectional io uh, so far we have discussed different types of io devices the io devices either uh, act as input device or output device as a consequence the ports are configured as input port or output port but there are some devices which are bidirectional in nature so through a single port data transfer in both directions can be uh, done by using this mode 2 let's see how it can be done uh to do this you have to set the control word in this way uh, only group a is available for mode 2 as you can see this is mode 2 mode 2 is possible only for uh, group a that means port a can be configured in mode 2 whereas group b that means port b cannot be configured in uh, mode 2 as you can see here Uh, it uh, uh, port b can be configured either in mode 0 or mode 1 so only port a can be configured in mode 2 and in that case that bit 6 has to be 1 and this this bit has to be 1 as it is shown here 6 and 7 are set to 1 and of course other bits are not important at this moment when we discuss the uh, mode 2 operation of this device uh, here the only uh, port a along with various uh, uh, various uh, those uh, different hand shaking signals necessary for bidirection and data transfer are shown here so these are the various uh, hand shaking signals necessary for data transfer in both directions and here the io bus is shown that means all the lines are connected to the io device that means these are part of the io device i o device is connected here 
let us see how we can transfer a data from the 8255, this is the 8255 side to the IO bus of the IO device. As you write some data uh, into the register, you have got a register, port a register here. That means whenever you write data into the port a register by this signal, obviously you have to execute one out instruction for that purpose. As you do that, then this leads to, uh, I mean, withdrawal of the interrupt acknowledge signal, INTRA signal, as well as it also uh, leads to activation of this output buffer full A signal. This goes to the IO device. This goes to the IO device. However, the IO device may take some time to uh, get ready and it may be a slow device. So whenever it is ready, to accept the data which has been loaded into port A, it will generate this strobe signal, sorry, acknowledgement signal, AC acknowledgement A. That means uh, by this signal, it informs the 8255 that the data which is available in port A uh, is, it is being read by the IO device. So it will generate this acknowledge signal and that will lead to a transfer of data from 8255 to IO bus. That means from 8 to 5, 5, it will go to the IO device. With the help of this acknowledgement signal, the bus is made active, active, otherwise it remains in the tri-state condition. So here we have shown it with the help of asynchronous mode. It could have been done by interrupt mode as well. Now, uh, the same thing, the same bus can be used to, to transfer data in the reverse direction. Let us see how it can be done. Suppose the IO device is sending a byte of data through this port to the uh, to this particular uh, port A register. There are actually inside there are two registers, one for uh, going from one in the direction from 8255 to IO and another from IO to 8255. So don't think that whenever it is coming from this, uh, from the 8255 to IO or IO to 8255, same register is being used. Internally, there are two registers but address is same. Now, whenever you uh, write a data from IO device into the port through this bus, you do it with the help of this strobe signal, STBA, strobe A signal. With the help of this strobe signal, STBA signal, data is latched from this IO bus into another register, of course, the same address, port A, and it, it is stored, loaded here. So IO to 8255, it goes. And at the same time, that input buffer full A signal goes high. Input buffer full A signal, as you can see, it goes high. And uh, indicating that the buffer is now full and IO device cannot load another byte of data. So it goes high. And to IO device knows that uh, the buffer is now full, it cannot write another byte of data send another byte of data. Then whenever the uh, uh, microprocessor is ready, that means uh, at its own time it will read data and generate say read command. Maybe because of the interrupt generated because of this, as you can see here, as you are strobing data, the interrupt gets activated. It can be by interrupt human mode. Or uh, then as a response to that, the microprocessor can uh, read a byte of data by executing that in instruction. And as you execute an in instruction, this read line will go low uh, for, two, uh, for, for some duration. And whenever this reading takes place, the data gets transferred from this port to the accumulator. And as you can see here, the interrupt is withdrawn. So this is how the 8255 uh, uh, can be used, particularly port A can be used to transfer data in two directions. Now, uh, this is very important uh, for bidirectional data transfer, but it is not commonly used. So we are left with another operation. As you can see here, uh, we have covered all the IO modes. Now, whenever this bit, uh, most significant bit is zero, then it is actually bit set reset mode. This is very useful 
in some applications, particularly control applications, let us see how it can be used. In bits, bit set reset mode, the control word, particularly bit 7, has to be made 0. So, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0 and 1. These are the, sorry, 1 and 0. These are the various bits. Now, bit 7 is used to configure this port uh, in this particular mode, bit set reset mode. Bit set reset mode. And whenever it is, it, it has to set in this mode, it has to be made 0. So, that is, this is 0 active. And, up, and how it is being, what is, what is the purpose? The purpose of this mode is to set or reset a particular bit of port C without modifying other bits. For example, in some control applications, you are, you want to switch on a relay, switch off a relay, turn on some device, turn on some device, you have to activate only one line. That can be done with the help of this. How it can be done? The value that you want to write has to be loaded here. That means the uh, bit set rate, bit set or reset. That means if it is 0, then it will set. If it is 1, then it will reset. So, with the help of this, that bit will be set or reset. Now, which bit? That is decided by these three bits, 1, 2 and 3. How? It selects the port C bits. How it is done? You can say port C bit select. If these are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then it selects bit 0 of port C. If it is 0, 0, 1, bit 1 of port C, and this way, if it is whenever it is 1, 1, 1, then it selects bit 7 of port C. So, you can see here, you can select a particular bit of port C and you can set or reset it by using this bit set reset mode and it is very useful in control applications. As I explained, whenever you have to perform setting or resetting of a particular uh, device, on or off a particular device like relay. Later on, we shall discuss the use of it in more detail when we shall come to some practical application. Now, uh, after discussing the programmable and non-programmable IO port devices, let us now focus on the use of these devices. And particularly, we shall start with the uh, interfacing of some input device, the switches and keyboard. You will not find any equipment where switches and keyboard are not used as input device. As we know, the microprocessor must have some input devices so that the user can pass on some information to the microprocessor and some output devices so that the, the response of the microprocessor is displayed or conveyed to the user. So, for both purposes, you require input output devices or peripheral. And the most common and popular is keyboard and switches. You are familiar with switches which are shown here. Switches are used to turn on a light, turn off a light. Uh, there are switches are available in various shapes and sizes. But uh, with the microprocessor, we use a very miniature form of switch like this. I do not know whether it is visible. It is representing this. Here, there are uh, eight uh, switches. This is known as deep switch, dual in line package switch. There are eight switches and uh, let me draw it in more detail in bigger form. So, it is like this. Here, uh, each switch has got two points. There are two points and there are eight such switches inside this miniature uh, device, uh, just like an IC and pin configuration is same. As you can see here, there are eight pins on one side and there are eight pins on the other sides. 
and these pins are available outside the chip. And on this side also pins are available, that is why it is called dual inline package, DIP, two lines. Now here it is written on, that means whenever this is, this is like a uh, switch like this, if it is, if, if this, this is, uh, this is taken to this side, that means if you shift that this to this side, then it is on, otherwise it is off. So, uh, you can shift it to this direction to make the on, to make the particular uh, switch on or if you shift it to this direction it will be off. And this particular, this type of switches, deep switches are used to input some fixed values. Suppose you have to set the temperature of a room in an air conditioner. So you can use this kind of deep switches for setting the temperature or some parameter can be passed to the switch and it can be very easily uh, incorporated in your circuit. You can uh, put it on the printed circuit board uh, just like an IC. That is why this type of switches are popular. Let us see how we can interface this switch to the microprocessor through a port. So I have drawn only the port size, port side. So this is PA0 to PA7, all port lines are there and you have to interface it. So you connect all these lines. to these port lines PA, PA0 to PA7. The other side of the switch can be grounded. So you connect all these lines to ground. Then you have to put pull up resistor to all these pins. You have to connect to all the lines and this is connected to VCC. What is the purpose? Let us try and let us try to understand. The purpose is whenever the switch is off, as you can see this through this resistor, the typical value of which is about 10 kilo ohm, this line is pulled to VCC or plus 5 volt. That means when the switch is off, this line is this point, this the port A will get a signal uh, which is uh, nothing but high or VCC. On the other hand, if the switch is closed, then this line is connected to ground. So uh, the port will read a 0 volt here. That means it will read 0 instead of 1. So uh, this helps you to pass on either 0 or 1. That means when the switch is off, then you get 1, when the switch is on, then you get 0 on these port lines. And this, this particular, uh, this 8255 port is connected to the microprocessor in the usual way. Uh, I am not discussing this. This is the system bus. We have already discussed in detail. In the usual way, this is connected. And one port of the 8255A is connected to this deep switch. So this is how you can interface a very simple uh, switch, 8-bit eight, eight switch to the microprocessor through a uh, port. And, and it is very simple. You have to perform just two operations like, like this. You have to configure IO port by using the usual comments. And after configuring it, you have to perform uh, read operation by executing an in instruction, read the port value. As you read the port value, you will be able to find out what is the condition of these switches. That means which bit is on, which bit is off and based on that the value, whatever value you want to convey to the microprocessor can be uh, found out by reading the, uh, the value that you read through this port line. So this is how you can interface a switch. Now 
let us consider uh, about consider what what we mean by uh, keyboard a keyboard is implemented by using such keys these are also switches but as you can see here you can depress it this is spring loaded so if you depress it then it makes a contact if you release it it opens up so inside the switch you have got like this there are two points and another one point that means whenever you depress it these two lines are connected and whenever I release it because of the spring action the connection is uh, uh, turned off Connect connection is uh, this uh, connection uh, is released because of the switch action that means it is a spring loaded switch a key is nothing but a spring loaded switch and you can form a keyboard by using these keys a number of such keys will be necessary to form a keyboard how do you form a keyboard usually to reduce the number of port lines you can do it in this way you can also connect in this manner in the same the way you have interfaced switches in the same manner in each position in each of these positions you can put a uh, key and uh, that will also act as a uh, you can interface the key, keys and it will form a keyboard however to reduce the number of port lines that you require so to reduce the number of port lines what is done the keys are uh, organized in two dimensional matrix two dimensional matrix let's see how it is being done here is a io port it can be 8 to 5 5 port line and we, here there are these are the port lines coming out so these are the four port lines and these are another four port lines now uh, what can be done you can take connections like this you can connect it in this manner say to each of the each of these lines are connected through a, through a resistor for pull up so this is connected to vcc for pull up so all the port lines are connected to uh, through some resistor to vcc now between each junction what you do uh, you take another connection say from this line into say here you take a connection let me draw it in another color so that it is clear another line another line another line so let us assume these port lines from the rows so these four from the rows and these four forms the columns then what you do you put a switch between each such junction so a key is connected on each junction so here four in this junction another 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 four and here also you put another four so you see here by using eight port lines you have been able to connect 16 keys four keys on this on this row and four keys on this column so that makes 16 that means by using four by four matrix you are able to interface 16 keys and the 16 keys are interfaced by using 
eight port lines. Now, if the if it is eight by eight matrix, that means you require eight plus eight, sixteen port lines, and you can interface uh, sixteen keys, sixty four keys by only using sixteen port lines. That's why I said that to reduce the number of port lines, we use uh, two-dimensional matrix. So by using the by arranging the keys in two-dimensional matrix, you are able to interface a large number of keys using smaller number of port lines. The question naturally arises: How do you identify the closure of a key? So that can be done by using row scanning technique. The, the technique is known as row scanning technique. I shall explain in detail this row scanning technique. In row scanning technique, what you do, there are uh, you can do it in this way. First of all, let us explain the steps you require steps of operations. What is the first step? First step is configure IO ports. For that purpose, what you have to do? You have to uh, program the control word. As I have explained, you have to configure the control word. What you have to do for that? For row scanning, you will configure these rows in the as output port and column lines as input port. So, configure IO ports here I, row, row lines as output and column lines as input. This will be your first step. After that, the second step will be step 1, this is step 1. What will be the second step? Second step is before you identify a key closure, you have to see that previous key depression has been released or not. So that before you uh, try to read a key, you have to ensure that the previous key uh, depressions has been released, you are not reading it second time. So, the second step will be check whether all keys are open. How can you do that? Let us try to understand how we can do this. What will you do? You will output all 0 on these lines. If you output all 0 on these lines and then that means you will output all 0 on the row lines and read the column line. What will happen? If there is any key depression, you will not get 1, 1, 1, 1. One of the line will be 0 because if the switch is closed as you have seen, this is connected to, sorry I have, yeah, this, this since you are making it low, that line will become 0. And as, as this line becomes 0, that means if this key is depressed, you will read this one, you will read this one. Sorry, I have drawn it wrongly. Actually, this will come from this, this will come from this, not from here. This will come from this and this will come from this. Actually, it will come from four, four rows. So, here, here and here. So, if any of these keys, is, this, this key is depressed, then this row, this column will read 0. If this key is depressed, say this on this row, uh, row, if this is 0 and if this key is depressed, then you will read this line 0. So, in this way, one of the row line you will read 0. Okay? So, this is how you can identify uh, whether uh, all the keys are open or not. If all the keys are open, only then you go to the next step. What is the step 3? You have to uh, check whether there is a key closure. There 
there is a key closer. So you have to check whether there is a key closer. How do you do? Per operation is same. You output 0, 0, 0, 0. And as you output 0, 0, 0, 0 and read this value, then if one of the data, one of the bit line is 0, then you know a key has been depressed. But you cannot tell it for sure which key has been depressed. That means if any one of the uh, uh, key of this particular column is depressed, then you will read this line 0. But you cannot say this key or this key or this key or this key, which key has been closed. You only know that a key on this column has been depressed. But you know a key closure has taken place. So you will make all the port, uh, row lines 0 and read the column lines and if there is any bit 0, then there is a key closure. Then you come to the step 4. Here in step 4, you perform that uh, identify, identify the closure of key by row scanning. How you do that? What is row scanning technique? In row scanning technique, what you do? First you make this line 0, the other lines 1, that means this line you make 0, the other lines, other port lines 1. What will happen? If there is any key closure on this row, then you will get cor corresponding column line uh, 0. But if none of the keys of this row is depressed, then you will not get 0 on the on these column lines, column bits. Then you change this value to say 1, 0, 1, 1. So next row, you are after scanning this row, you go to the next row, then after scanning the second row, you go to the third row, then after third row is over, you go to the fourth row, 1, 1, 1, 0. So in this way, you can you can uh, scan all the four rows by generating this kind of output. You generate this kind of output, first you scan with the help of this, you scan this row, then this row, then this row and this row. This can be very easily done. Suppose you uh, by the help of program, you can uh, set a particular register to 1110, then you output it, then you shift that bit 0. And as you shift that bit, it goes to the next row, then you scan the next row. In this way, row scanning can be done. So you can say there are several steps. 4.1, step 4.1 is uh, scan row 0. 4.2 is scan row 1. In this way, we will go to uh, k steps. Let us assume because as we assume that there are key rows, so scan row k. In this way, you will write a program to obviously we will do this particular step in a loop and also all this, this step also will be in a loop, this step will be in a loop and it will, it will check all these things on then this row scanning also done in a loop and you will require k steps to identify key closure. And after this is over, what you have to do? You have to find the binary code of the closed key. What you have to identify is say you can give some number, say this key is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, like that and the corresponding code you have to send to the microprocessor. So once a particular key a closure as is identified, you can use either a table lookup or you can follow some rule by which you can tell that if, if this key is closed, then row number and column number. So say this value, say 0, 1, 1, 1 and whatever data you read here, uh, particular bit, 
then either this or this or this, then depending on that code row and column bits you can combine and that itself can form a code, but you can form another codes. After you have identified the code of the key, then that code will be sent to the microprocessor and accordingly it will jump to a particular subroutine. For example, you have depressed uh, read memory key and after that key closure is identified, the, it, the processor will jump to a subroutine corresponding to read memory. So, this is how key closure is done by using row scanning technique. Now, uh, let me show a practical keyboard. This is a practical keyboard. Here you see there are 20 keys. You must have seen this kind of keyboard in your microprocessor kit. You have seen this. So, here you see there are 20 keys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and here 4. So, they have been organized in, in this way actually 5 rows and 4 columns. Let me look at the circuit diagram of this particular keyboard that I am showing to you and this side can be connected to the port lines. So, this keyboard having 20 keys can be interfaced uh, to a microprocessor through port lines and using these wires. Let us look at the circuit diagram of this particular keyboard. So, here you see as I told there are 5 rows, 5 rows and there are 4 keys in each row. So, that makes 20 keys and in that particular printed circuit board, if you look at the other side, the keys are uh, soldered and actually each key is provided with 3 pins and these pins are actually identical. And whenever this particular, uh, whenever key is depressed, this makes a contact with these two lines. So, you can do the wiring in such a way by making use of these two lines, we shall, uh, which is shown here. For example, these two lines are same and this is that center point. And uh, here, these are the four resistors which are acting as pull up and these are connected to the column lines which are the input lines. You may connect it to say port B, say port B0, port B1, port B2 and port B3. On the other hand, these lines are connected to another port, say port A0, port A1, port A2, port A3 and port A4. You may be wondering, uh, what are these devices? Actually, these are protection diodes these diodes have been configured in such a way, has been connected in such a way that if this line is 0, then the current, if this key is depressed, then the current can flow and go, can go in this direction. On the other hand, uh, if uh, by mistake suppose uh, the, this port as well as this port has been configured as output ports and both are 1, that may lead to destruction of the port chip to avoid the destruction of the port chip, the connections have been, these diodes are used, these are essentially protection diodes, so that the, if this is 1, then this diode will be off. So, this cannot connect, this one and the another port line one cannot be uh, connected through a switch and uh, uh, this will not lead to any uh, destruction of the device. So, for the protection of the device, this is being done. Now, uh, we can use the, the row scanning technique that I have told to identify the key closer. So, what you have to do? You have to configure port A as output port in this particular uh, step, port A as output port, port B as input port. So, let us assume this is 8255. 
and so this step is done then check whether all keys are open so you will output 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 on port A and it will read port B if all if these are all 1, 1, 1, 1 then none of the keys are closed that means all keys are open then you will go to so if this is not open then you will you will do it in a loop you will keep on looping here until you get 1, 1, 1, 1 here after outputting 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 you will keep on checking uh, these lines and until all are 1 this uh, particular step is not complete. After you get 1, 1, 1, 1 on these lines then you go to the third step. In the third step already you have output uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now you check whether at least one of the line is 0. Then you know that a particular key has been closed. And after that what you do? You do the, uh, uh, you, you go on generating say make this bit 0, then you make 1, 1, 1, sorry, uh, 1, 1, 1 and 1. So, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, as you can see here, in this case you are generating the port values in decoded form. In decoded form you are generating the uh, row values. Now, uh, whenever you do it in this manner, the number of port lines obviously will be equal to the number of rows. Is there any way by which you can reduce the number of rows? For that purpose, you can make use of decoder circuit. We have seen that in the normal form, normal row scanning technique, you are generating the output in decoded form. What you are doing? You are you are outputting first, say first row, that is then the sec you are uh, in the second row scope, uh, second step you are generating uh, this is 0, 1, 1, 1, then you are generating 0, uh, sorry, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, then you are generating 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, then you are generating 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. This is how you are generating in decoded form. Instead of that, what you can do? You can generate the output in encoded form. How? On these row lines, so this corresponds to 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So, this corresponds to 0, 0. You generate in or you can say uh, I can use 3 bits. 0, 0, 0 correspond to this. This is your D0 and D1, 2, 3, 4, D4. And so, this is the code of that. Then this corresponds to what? This corresponds to uh, this bit is uh, this bit is 0 that means you have to output uh, you have to make it this bit 1 1 0 0 or it can be this one will be 1 0 1 0 and it is 1 1 0 that means the, the bit which has been made 0 that value and en that encoded value is being generated and this is 0 0 1 and 1 0 1. And what you can do? You can make use of a decoder and apply these values, these three values. And here you will get, although eight lines are there, we will make use of these five lines. And these lines can be used, can be connected to the port line. That means, let us go back to this diagram. Here, whenever you generate the output in encoded form, then you put a decoder here, you put a decoder chip and the decoder outputs are connected to these lines. And here you connect the Port lines. So, P A 0, P A 1, P A 2 are connected here and as usual port B are connected to these lines. So, this is same, this remains same. But here you see instead of 5 port lines you require 3 port lines. 
So as you generate 0, 0, 0, as you know in case of a decoder, three, this is a 3 to 8 decoder, this, this line will become 0 if this input is 0, 0, 0. And if it is 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 0, 1, then this line will be 0. And in this way, you can generate the same output as you require in case of your row scanning in the same manner. But you require lesser number of port lines. And uh, with the help of decoder chip, additional hardware that you require, a decoder, you are generating the decoded output. So you are generate the microprocessor will be generating rather the through the port lines the encoded output of the row, encoded form of the row number, and you will get the decoded form of the row number here. So this is how you can make use of the decoder to reduce the number of port lines that you require in interfacing the keyboard. For example, uh, uh, here you require port A and port B, but suppose we do not want that, we want to use only one port, say port C. So what you can do, you can make let's say PC0, PC1, PC2 and PC3 and this can be made say PC <coughs> PC4, PC5 and PC6. Just by using one port as you know, port C, these four bits can be configured as out input and PC4, 4, 5, 6 and 7 configured can, can be configured as output independently and that is available only for port C in basic I.O. mode. So you can use a single port to interface 20 or even more number of keys by using a single port, which cannot be done if this decoder is not used. So this helps you to understand the use of a decoder. Now uh, our discussion on interfacing of keyboard will not be complete if I do not use, do not discuss about another technique that is line reversal technique. And to explain that let me go back to this diagram. Here we have seen that row scanning will require four steps to generate the row number and to identify a key closer. But you can do it in another way. What you do, you first you configure these ports as output, these ports as input. Say in step 1, step 1, say this is port A and this is port B, let us assume. So configure Put A as output and uh, put B as input. And then uh, on port A, generate all 0. And on port B, you read data. So you have configured this as port A output and port B as input, then you are, you have generated uh, all 0 here and read the value here. If there, is, if there is any key closer, you can find out uh, by this technique on which column a key has been, a particular key has been closed, a column number can be identified. Now you go to the second step, in second step you configure the other way configure port B as output and port A as input. If you do this and then you generate port A uh, on port A on port B you generate all 0 and on port A you read data. That means now what you are doing, you are changing the direction of the port line. You have outputted, you have made these lines out as output and these lines as input. So you are reversing the line and by doing that, you can identify the row number. So this will identify the column number and this will identify the row number. So by knowing the 
row number and column number you can identify the closure of a key and you require in this case only two steps, step 1 and step 2. So, if you have a large number of rows, then this particular technique will require lesser time to identify a key closure. However, it has some problem. In this case, you cannot make use of a decoder because if you make use of a decoder, this port always has to be output. So, you cannot make use of a decoder in line reversal technique. Secondly, in line reversal technique, there is another problem. If there is closure of more than one key, say suppose two keys have been closed, say the, the, a particular on this column, this key and on this key. So, this key and this key have been closed uh, on row number say 3 and row number 2 on column number 3 and 2. Now, you reverse this say closure of these two and closure of these two keys cannot be differentiated. So, if there is a closure of two keys, you cannot identify the difference. So, this is the problem with line reversal technique. Uh, I have to discuss two more problems, one is key bounds. Because these keys are spring loaded, as you depress the key, you have made it, made a connection like this. We have seen that you have made a connection like this, this side is grounded and through a resistance this is connected to the port line. Now, as you depress a key, normally the output line should go low, this line should go low and you should get a clean output and this is the time for depression, key depressed. But unfortunately, because of the spring action, you will get a output like this. That means, the because of the spring action, there will be some vibration of the key and it will make, make and break contact here and it will also make and break contact here. This is known as key bounds. So, you will not get a perm, uh, steady closure here on during this period and also during this period and this time has been found to be about 10 to 20 millisecond. How do you overcome this problem? You can overcome this problem of key bounds by software means. What you do after you have identified a key closure, you generate a delay of 20 millisecond and after 20 millisecond you read the value of key closure once again. And then if, uh, the, during this period, there will be no this kind of make and break of the switch. And during this period, uh, you get a permanent closure and you read, the, read that value and you get a permanent closure of the key. And this is how by software technique, you can overcome the problem of key bounds. Apart from key bounds, there is another problem, rollover. Rollover, the problem of rollover comes because of multiple key depression. As I have mentioned by mistake, say you are depressing two keys here by mistake or intentionally you may depress two keys. So, in such a situation, how do you overcome the problem? You are interested in identifying the closure of a single key because you have to uniquely identify the closure of a key and you have to perform the corresponding function. If more than one keys are depressed, obviously you cannot, the processor cannot perform two functions simultaneously. So, what should be done? There are two techniques to overcome this problem. One is known as two key lockout. This is one technique. By using this two key lockout technique, if more than one key depression is identified, that obviously can be done. If you do are doing row scanning, if more than one key is closed, you will be able to identify that. As long as more than one key keys are depressed, you will not consider it as a valid key depression. Only when you sense the depression of a single key, then you consider it as a valid key depression and then you go to the corresponding operation, jump to the corresponding subroutine to perform that operation. 
another technique that is used is n key rollover in n key rollover what you do you find out the keys which have been uh, closed and say not uh, store them in a sequence say key number k j and l so you store them in a particular memory then you inform the microprocessor that this is the these are the keys which have been closed then the microprocessor will perform this operation first after that the, the operation corresponding to this after that corresponding to this and in this way up to n keys the uh, the value of n keys closures can be stored and the corresponding operations can be performed so we can conclude this lecture by saying that we have discussed the interfacing of two very common peripherals switch and keyboard to the microprocessor and in the next lecture we shall discuss the interfacing of another very important device that is the input device the light emitting diodes diodes thank you